Aye, moors, moors. You follow? I don't know what those are. My, my. Ain't this a right dizzy jig we're dancing? <laughs> Time's making fool of us both. Ha! His looks a bit hazy, as though he's having a hard time keeping his eyes fresh. I turn my head slightly. What's more, person? Where I was born, live. A town? A new town? City. I think it's been there for a while. That right. He doesn't speak, and I glance over just quickly enough to catch him at the end of nodding. Did you know this place was a moor for a time? Miss, I don't know what. What is that? It is a dead place. A wet place. I, too, was born in a moor. Huh? Hmm? Uh... Can't your stomach read a mood? Bleeding hell. I was about to tell a tale. Sorry. You're hungry, is it? Starving. Us fiends here. We only eat souls. And only for pleasure. Quit joking. Joking? Hey, you got any food? What you... Hi, you guys. Um... What are you blathering on about? Blithering on about? I look like I got food. I don't got any food, idiot. <laughs> However, here... I thrust out my hands just before the barrier palms up. Um, huh? Give me the test nuts in your pack. I smell them. He hesitates. Why? So I can cobble them up. What do you think? I'll cook them for you. They're not long from the... What? They're not long from the branch or the ground. Smells like you haven't cooked them. And nor have you eaten them. You prefer the taste of them cooked? He nods slowly. I switch my fingers, waiting. Is there something you want um, for this? Your company for the morning. Till noon. That's it? I nod. Okay. Deal. His words spoken like a... What? Like a kneel? It resonates deeply, echoing and shakes ash from the walls. Startled, the boy covers his mouth. Holy shit. Dale, was it? Hmm. A smile. Oh my god, what's happening here? Here. Did I just... I, you made a pact. Oh shit. Hmm. Shaking his head, he sighs. Wordlessly, carefully, he takes out the pack and opens it. Up. Withdrawing a bushel of nuts in two hands, he for he moves forward. I look down at him, still waiting. And, with steady movements, he brings his hands to mine. He holds my gaze, and I don't move at all. But I do think... I think, wait, couldn't I just, couldn't I just, you know, quickly just, my hand's tense, but it ends with a thought, hmm, he drops the heap into my palms, my fingers curl around it, again, I turn up my lips, seeing this, he hops back, give me a moment. I take all but one into my left hand, holding the last between my right thumb and forefingers. Forefinger. 
Opening my mouth, I bring it between my teeth and puncture it with one of my fangs. I bite through the shell, making a rough cut from one end to the other and taking it out. Observing the inner flesh of it, I spit out the shreds. Satisfied, I go on to carve the second, third, fourth, and so on. When I finished, I hold a chestnut, a loaf, and make a heath what make a hearth hearth of my hand. This'll take a while, person, but not so long. Might we talk some? Um sure. Then have a seat. Where'd we leave off before your stomach was so rudely interrupted? He shifts, chin on his knees, and eyes half lidded. More something? Ah, yes. I'll tell you a story about Moors in return for yours. Though, rather than a story, a chat'd be nice, eh? Save you a story for a bit later. What do you want to talk about? Moors. Oh, right. My moor. Hey, mine. Hmm? There really isn't much to say, come to think of it. You said you were born there. Aye, like all fiends, I was born in waste. You've read about us, eh? About how we make a barren anywhere we stand, unconsciously drain life from the earth for our sustenance. Hmm? Huh, pallid land and Kalingus loft. Kalingus loft? Air crawling low and damp with miasma. Miasma? Miasma? The pith of plants choked, sterile. I feel my face twisting so twisting the skull. Sounds uh Hmm. Hmm? Sounds hideous, I know, because it is. Did you grow up there? Ha, huh, a neat question. Eh? Hey? Aye, I did. Had a mother and father. Always got me wondering. Is this where I'll be when I get old? A bloody moor? Ha. Huh. Guess not. You left it then? Left it for many places. <sighs> I'm sorry guys for yawning. Um. What was it like growing up there? Tedious. May, maybe I shouldn't have brought it up at all, eh? You just don't want to talk about it. That's okay. No, no, it's not a matter of okay. There's just not much of anything to talk about. It's all very colorless. That's a cool thing to say. Colorless. Hmm, I might start using that for, to describe bland things. I don't know. What about yours? Now what? Your more. Uh, it's not really anything special. Just a typical city. Typical. To me, not the same to you. Oh, to me, it's not the same to you. Well, it's big, loud, streaks are packed with folks, lots of smoke and brick. My mom and pa run a farm near there, cause they're crazy. Oh, is that where your sense from? My, my sense? You smell like herbs and horses. It's quite adorable. Um, you also smell like black oil, but I'm not sure where from. City's probably pretty modern. I have to lift canisters of oil from place to place every Wednesday. Ah, tough. He nods. Huh. Very tough. Hey, knock it off, will ya? I do hard work. It kind of slurs the sentence, but is nevertheless determined to appear strong. I believe you. For your noble, strong efforts, I think it's time for your story. You ready? 
He shrugs. I clear my throat and loosen up my shoulders somewhat, poising my fire hand dramatically. Hmm. Did you know that stars sometimes act as rain in the night sky? You mean like a meteor shower? Hush. I've never heard of it, but never seen it. Well, I've heard of it and know it because I've seen it. Imagine this. Thousands, thousands of lights, and they all bleed along the cold cerulean mirror above, slowly, very slowly. Follow? They are so very slow that as they make the long stretch out above, out above you, you hardly notice their drag. It is an impeccable slowness. Imagine it. He nods very slowly and nods it another way, drifting into his memory. A flash. A flare of fire hit. What? A flare of the fire in my hand. The chestnut wax. Splitting, crackling. He jumps, the light catching in his eyes. Flash. Haha, <laughs> flash, flash. With each of those words, I stroke the flames. They lick up and dance wildly. Each single brilliant stake streak cuts through the lights, independent and free. And then it dies. The magic in my palm fades in size. It pulses, fades, pulses, fades. His eyes glaze over. Like this. Like a heart's last beating. Death is quick to these stars. Straying my f wait, wait, what? Straying my eyes from the light, hand they so turned. I hadn't noticed. I gaze upon the boy. Say, person, that's sorrowful to you. Huh? He thinks of an answer. It is. There isn't a right answer, person. You don't have to consider it like there is one. You think it's sorrowful? I do. That's interesting. Truly interesting. I end the fire leaving the chestnuts to cool. I blow on them and quickly and breathe on them. Wait, what? I blow on them and breathe on them. Ears twitching. They're, these are done now. I hold them out to him. My end of the bargain's met, and you know what? I'll do you a favor. I'll go ahead and roast the rest of your chestnuts in my fire here. I motion to the dead leaves. I do this for free, for no deal. All that's left now is for you to stay. Squinting, he waits a little, but soon enough crawls forward on his hands and calves his pack and toe. He stops at the edge of the circle and takes the fruit from my hand. He looks at me, wearing a kind of ugly expression. What? Setting onto his rear, he what what? Settling onto his rear, he keeps looking at me, but a bit less ugly. He seems to be wondering something. Eventually he looks up at the nuts in his hand instead. He faces softening. He shells open one and pops into his mouth. His face flushes naturally. He chews a little. He pushes his pack into the circle with his foot, shifts back a few feet, and speaks. Which part of what was the story, miss? Well, look at it. Wait, what? Look at that. You aren't entirely daft. I took up the bag from the ground, shake it a little. Doesn't smell like there's anything more than chestnuts near. I open it up and check. Sure enough, finding things in excess. Some within blurs still on. Some still green. I toss those ones. I still rummage through it, just in case there might be something interesting. There's not. 
twas a preamble twas what twas a preamble twas there's a story to it for certus certus i told you i've seen this blinking he nods with a hollow sound i crack open the chestnuts apart in my mouth Ugh. I grow to the f I grow the fire at my feet and drop it in there. No more flashy tricks now. As I re reiterate, re reiterate, reiterate those actions, these actions, I speak to the boy. I was not alone with those stars then. I was with another miss. Dropping another into the fire, I watch in the fall. My eyes lose some of their color. She was fair, young, and human. A pretty miss. Such a charming girl. We would dance together and sing. Press close when unseen sigh. Press close. I was fascinated with her, I think. And so, when she got in melancholy, I brought her from town to the, what I brought her from town and to those stars. I had the ache in my knee, knew the eventide would be crying, and had figured the beauty of it would settle her. The boy constricts his brow, chewing somewhat sadly. Oh, not to worry, not to worry. It did, it did. He swallows. I've never understood the custom of man. I've always been free thinking and never bound to the thoughts of others. My action that night, no, my actions altogether, none took kindly to it when she returned. What happened? What happened? What? Well, after I took her back to the town, she was. What? Plogged? Plowed? Plowed? Plowed and beaten. And beaten and beaten. And plowed and beaten and beaten. Until she could not move nor breathe. The boy stares, a nut in his hand, held stiff, only so sh so near to be to his parted lips. God, I suck at reading. I buried her under the sky where I last saw her smiling. He closes his mouth into a frown. A century later, I returned to her spot and I found an olive tree grown there. It was the sickest thing, gnarled and twisted, was. Furious, I raised the entire plant, its trunk, its bark, its branches and leaves. I scorned its roots. Would have torn out the roots, though refined, to not disturb her. Yet, last I've seen, it remained. Alive, born, fruit, born fruit, and uglier than before. Hmm? I don't like switching the accents. I, I'm sorry for that. Isn't that the most wonderful story one can tell? No. Ha. I dropped the last of the chestnut into the leaves. Didn't you mess up the guys who did it? Didn't you mess up the guy? mess up you're a fiend you didn't eat them I didn't eat them what happened to them doesn't matter to the story I wanna know I don't wanna tell ugh seriously miss you know when kids in the neighborhood mess with others but with a uh, with my kid brothers I beat their faces when with a stick. Oh god, that's violent. That's what love is. It's taking care of your mates. Love. What was the figure? Wait, wait. That what? That what you figure from this tale? That I fancied her? Well, obviously. Hmm. In my story, person, not yours. Come off. It's my story, person, not yours. Come off it. In an old, 
it is an old story, and it's... And it isn't only a story. Stop. What? Man. He tucks the shell in his hand against the wall at his side. His expression sour. Fine. I was just entertaining you as I cooked. That's stupid. Bollocks. I don't want to hear that from your fool. From your fool arse. Well, that's stupid. It's stupid. Forget it. What? What was... What's this? You starting. You starting? Your stone's dropping now? Drop them any further, I'll tear them out. Tear out your tongue, too, you hear? Don't start with me. The boy freezes, hand hovering above his last chestnut. I'll rip your legs off, understand? Don't start with me. Last thing you need to be worrying over is your, your soul. Since I'll rend you limbless if you start with me. And there won't be anything to be holding that soul at, at all. You start with me, I'll kill you. We clear person? He quickly nods. I chuckle. You're a cute thing, aren't you? Quailing so tender. I can't move from here, person. You know that. Quivering, he speaks up. It, it sounded pretty real. Did it? The boy lets out a long sigh, a loud sigh, shaking as it leaves him. Still vibrating f with fear, he fumbles open his last chestnut, or last nut. There looks to, what, what? There looks to still be bits of shell on the fruit, which he does not notice until his, in his mouth. He frowns a bitter frown and calms down somewhat, now distracted by the taste. Some of those are finished, man. A nod at the fire. Can toss them to you, if you'd like, if you're still scared. No, I'm not. He rocks his head. I'm fine. But I'm pretty tired. Can you toss them anyway? Aye, aye. Surely could. As... Also shot... You know what, guys? I'm really tired. As you can tell by my terrible reading. I'll continue this next time, alright? I'll see you guys in the next one, alright? Later!